knew that they cannot change society. So instead of reflecting on themselves, they blamed the beasts, heaven or hell. Kai versus Soul. Duel one. Let's rock. What's up guys, welcome back. In today's video we're going to check out not a video game, but an actual board game, a tabletop game based on a video game and one that is near and dear to me. Guilty Gear by Arc System Works, translated by Level 99 Games. It's a game that gets my blood pumping, it's a game that I want to tell you about, I want to show you, because it's something that you just need to experience to know just how good it is. So without further ado, let's check out the Guilty Gear Strive, the board game by Level 99 Games. At the time of recording, there's only one pack available of the Guilty Gear Strive board game being the demo pack. They send these out for free, that, that's right, if, if you don't have one in your mailbox yet, where have you been? Be sure to go out there and grab yourself one of these because it's absolutely fantastic. Now on the front side we see some beautiful artwork as we've seen before from the Guilty Gear Strive uh, the video game by Arc System Works. It's a completely licensed, fully licensed product developed by Level 99 Games who are kind enough to send over this demo pack. Thank you very much. On the back side you can see that it's actually crazily loaded specifically because it's a free demo pack. It's 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 quite out there, right? So we have 71 cards split between two characters. We have two talk boxes and a playmat. What it doesn't say here, but which is included, are actually two coins that you can use as your life token. Now, I'm gonna quickly open this up. There we have our coins. Let's see. Here we have our two talk boxes, Kai Kisk, Soul Bad Guy, and here we have our play mat, which you still have to fold out, obviously it's not an embroidered or anything. But it's already amazing that they feature this. Again, it's just a demo pack, but it's loaded with goodness, and it's all that you need to get going and start battling with your friends. All right, so let's quickly prepare stuff. Let's unfold this mat. Alright, so here are our little tuck boxes. We have Kai Kisk, the almighty all-rounder, and we have Soul Bad Guy, the ruthless striker. These are the main protagonists in Guilty Gear, especially Soul Bad Guy. And the thing with it, uh, with Guilty Gear Strive, the board game, is that it comprises 20 characters. That That is a lot. That is, in fact, the entire base game's roster plus DLC pack season 1. That's, that's quite uh, the luxury already. I, I absolutely love it. I don't know if season two, season three characters might also make it to the board game. Um, at point of time of this recording is not in the planning yet, but who knows? So, as you might be familiar uh, with the Exceed system, you have your basic attacks, you have your special attacks, and you have your ultra attacks, right? So here's your character card. You have Soul Bad Guy. This is his uh, regular mode. This is his Exceed mode, and it is crazily strong. I can tell you that much already. Here you have your action card. You must be familiar with that if you've ever played an Exceed game before. We have our normal attacks card. That's relatively new. Haven't seen that much with other uh, previous releases. And your special attacks. 
and your ultra attacks. Super powerful. Then you have these cards that are actually all of your uh, attacks, your normal attacks, special attacks, and these ultra attacks, which you have to pay your gauge uh, cards for in order to use. We shuffle the deck. And we're all set up. Now let's open up Kai Kiesk, the almighty all-rounder. This is actually my main character in the video game. I like his footwork uh, in contrast to Soul Bad Guy's uh, raw power. I like him better actually. You have another rules card. We have Kai here in his exceed mode and here in his standard mode. Now his exceed mode is also quite crazy. If you start using the cancel, the special mechanic of this season, it's, it's wild man. <laughs> it's, it's wild. You have the normal attacks, special and ultra attacks. And here is the deck, the Sacred Edge, that's an amazing one. We shuffle that, one more round, we're all set up to play. Now in any Exceed game, every round comprises of one action that you can take. You can either prepare, which actually means you can draw cards, prepare for whatever comes next. You can decide to move, uh, which now is called Walk in this version. Uh, the Guilty Gear Strive edition. You can choose to boost your character to prepare and set up for uh, stronger attacks or more movability or draw extra cards, all that stuff. You can decide to change cards if you have a hand you can't do much with. You can also choose for a manual reshuffle. I don't use it all that much, but it's also an option, right? You can go into the exceed mode of your character or you can choose to strike. In that case, you're not drawing any cards that turn. Now, this is all standard, all good and well, but what is the unique um, season ability of the Guilty Gear Strive game is that you can cancel boosts. Now, that is a bit of a, a bit of a tricky one to understand because the translation from the source material, the video game, it's used in a slightly different way. Now, if you're not familiar with Guilty Gear Strive, the video game, here's how it works. Guilty Gear, um, from the very first game onwards, was developed with this cancel mechanic, which means that you can head into an attack and then during the frames that it's actually playing out the animation, you can cancel that. So to catch your opponent off guard, you can switch into another attack. Now that is called canceling your attack. You have Roman cancels and all that stuff. Now in this game, in the board game, the translation of it, it works slightly different and it's not a full-on cancel in that regard. So you look for any boosts, the boosts are the bottom half of your card or the bottom portion. And if you see this clock with the, uh, the number next to it, symbol there over the boost, then you can cancel that boost. But it doesn't cancel out the effect of the boost. They, stay with me, stay with me. So. Say we have um, this slash card in our hand, it's cancelable. So I want to play this uh, boost, which is called dash. The effect is I advance three. It's, it's not a permanent uh, boost, doesn't have that symbol. It's just an immediate effect. Now I can do that. I can play that boost. I can advance up to three, not up to three, sorry. Advance three spaces, so one, two, three. And now I'm within striking range of most of my attacks, which are either range one or two, right? So that is how that works. Now, if I want to cancel this, I have to pay one card from my gauge. So say I have a card in my gauge right here. I can spend that. This goes over to the discard pile and I get another action, right? So say I want to play another boost say this one the attack is called gunflame but the boost is rock you it's a permanent um, boost but it's cancelable so what this allows me to do is if I go into a strike the next available strike I get plus one power and I draw one card and after that if the opponent is stunned I gain advantage meaning next turn is also mine so I play this card because I cancelled I play another action and I play another boost. 
Now I want to cancel this again, so I have another card in my gauge. I use that to pay for that, and I get another turn, right? Say I want to move into an attack, which is a special attack, it's called a Night Raid Vortex. I have two of them in my hand right now, so I can play it as an X attack, um, meaning I get plus one power, plus one speed, plus one armor, plus one guard. Now in this way, you can set up yourself for some amazing combos. You can build boost upon boost, really get all amped up, worked up there, and then head into a strike like this X attack, a Night Raid Vortex. And it gets even crazier when you start to look at your character abilities. So for Soul Bad Guy, which we were playing just now, it means that when you strike, if you cancel this turn, add one power to your strike. Now if you exceed him, which costs you three gauge, that's not less, when you exceed him, when you exceed strike, sure, we do that, and when you strike, if you cancel this turn, add plus two power. Unfortunately, this doesn't stack, so I can't cancel three times and effectively add six power. But all the same, you can build your boosts really nicely. Keep going with the flow. Keep going into that, uh, that turn that you're going by canceling. Add the power that Sol has and then dish out some insane damage. Now for Kai, it's slightly different in the sense that he has different character abilities, which actually translate very, very nicely from the game. I already told you that Kai Kiesk is my main character in Guilty Gear Strive, mostly because of his maneuverability, but also because he has some uh, really powerful signature uh, long-range attacks, which are also obviously in the board game, uh, being the special attacks and the ultra attacks. Now, if you cancel with Kai, the first time each turn you cancel, you may advance or retreat one, which translates to that footwork he has, right? He's very maneuverable. After you've exceeded, which only costs two, compared to Soul Bad Guys three, the first time each turn you cancel, draw one. Then you may advance or retreat, which effectively means you, you cancel cards, which cost your gauge, but the cards that you're discarding, you're actually drawing back. So that is amazingly uh, beneficial. You can keep your hand quite full, thereby keep refreshing your cards, spend cards, build your gauge, cancel, and keep moving about. This is fantastic the way it's incorporated into the game. Um, I do find it debatable. If it's actually canceling, it certainly isn't canceling in the way that Guilty Gear video games work, but they do help in cancelling out the turn of your opponent, thereby keeping you on the roll, keeping you going. There are, however, a few things I would like to remark uh, first of all, for anyone who has been playing Exceed games before by level 99 games, you might be surprised to find that Guilty Gear Strive, the board game, at least the demo deck, has no mentioning of the Exceed fighting system like at all. There's, there's no mentioning on it, uh, of it, there is no logo on it, nothing. But it's fully compatible with the other fighting packs. So, for example, another fighter from Arc System Works, which I've reviewed on the channel. If you've missed out on that video, be sure to check it out. It's it's an insanely good fighting game. Uh, Under Night in Birth, and this is the X Late Clear version. This is clearly, unmistakably, an Exceed game. Exceed fighting system featuring the Under Night in Birth. Uh, this is one of the seasons, and this is the basic pack featuring their protagonists, Hyde and Lin. Beautiful set. I actually love Lin in the video game and I like her very much in um, the Exceed fighting system. But it's a complete crossover here. So you can use your characters from Under Night in Birth and fight Sol and Kai and all of the other Guilty Gear characters. You can even go one step further by incorporating the Shovel Knight characters. The Exceed fighting system, Shovel Knight. This is the box where they've included four characters being the Plague Knight, the Polar Knight, Treasure Knight and the King Knight. I absolutely love the Polar Knight. The Plague Knight 2 is quite nasty with his with his stuff. King Knight not so much. Treasure Knight 
is also great. Now, you can imagine some crazy matchups using your Shovel Knight characters, your Undernight Inbirth, your Guilty Gear, there's even the Street Fighter, Blaze Blue. I'm a big, big Blaze Blue fan. In fact, I'm a big fan of Arc System Works. So seeing level 99 games moving from Blaze Blue and Undernight Inbirth to Guilty Gear, that just got my blood pumping, man. And I, I really wanted to cover this get this video out to you guys i've been making so many videos of arc system works as games and now level 99 games who have been kind enough to send over everything that you see in front of you the big shout out big thank you to level 99 games for sending over this stuff and effectively making me quite addicted to this game this system this exceed fighting system i love it guilty gear strive the seventh season they've come up with is currently in the last few days of the Kickstarter campaign and I urge you even if you're not going to buy the full set just show your appreciation pledge even if it's one buck doesn't really matter go to the Kickstarter page donate and if you are interested in grabbing yourself these prices are as low as they can get at the moment I mean for 99 bucks, I believe it is, you have the full pack featuring 20 characters, even a, an embroidered playmat. You have gold, um, gold version of these coins. I mean, the whole shebang, all the tuck boxes are there. Yeah, there's a link in the description down below to the Kickstarter page. Be sure to check it out. Check out the other editions featuring acrylic stands. And there's even ways of tucking in the Undernight Inbirth and the Blaze Blue sets as well featuring acrylic stands. It's it's amazing. I am super excited for this. I hope you guys are as well. If you like any of those fighting games, right? Guilty Gear, Strive, Underright Inbirth, x Laid Clear, or Blaze Blue, be sure to check it out. Don't sleep on this. And on that note, guys, I am signing off. If you have enjoyed this video, if it has been helpful to you in any meaningful way be sure to hit that like button and if you're not subscribed here yet why don't you just take the opportunity and do so and i will see you in the next video thank you so much for watching Smell of the